These are strange days indeed for all of us, not just for us in Australia, but for the whole world. Who would have believed a few months ago that we would be in a situation where we're all isolated, where we have to have certain distances from each other and uh, virtually many confined to their homes and unable actually to see their families. Who would have believed? But I think from everything we have to learn a lesson. And I think we're being taught a very profound lesson from this. Actually, somebody phoned me before and said, can you give us some thought from the Torah in this respect? And uh, I started to discuss with them and I thought, let me share with even a, w a wider range of people thoughts which I think come out of the situation. Number one, I think we've all learned over these past few weeks that we should never take anything for granted. All of those things that we felt were just there for us to take any time, even those things in the supermarket, it's taught us never take anything for granted. And at this time when even we can't uh, go to our shul to pray together, again we learn from this that even those situations where many do not take advantage of at other times, now there's a craving when we don't have it to actually want to be together in a shul, particularly at this time. So that's a profound lesson, I think, for each and every one of us, not just as Jews, but for humanity, that we should appreciate what we have and take nothing for granted, because when, it's, when we don't have it, that, is the, that really shows how valuable those things are to us. And in fact, I've said many times, many times, in fact, I, I gave it in a drosh when I was a rabbi, I said, if you closed every shul, it'll be that time when, when, it, when the shul is not so accessible that people will actually want to go to shul. Because when it's out of your reach, that's when we want it. And what more, for this time when, we, when the world is going through such turmoil, do we want to be in shul? And unfortunately, we can't. And therefore, we're separated. Now, as I said, there's a lesson in that for all of us. Another lesson which I think this time is teaching us is how interdependent we are on each other. Close one business and it affects hundreds of thousands, millions. One situation where you affect one part of the community it actually leads on to affecting virtually everybody. How interdependent we are on each other. That's another profound lesson I think we're learning from this. And thirdly, a very important lesson. And everybody's, many people are in a panic because we realize that ultimately, although we think things are in our control, they're not. There's obviously higher power, a higher power, call it what you will, we call it Hashem, who really controls this world. Now, I'm going to share with you a lesson which I feel can be taken out of this week's Torah reading by Yukra. It's the third book of the Torah, and it's the first Sidra in this week's, um, in, in this book of Sefer by Yukra. Can I share with you firstly the fact that as I said we're, we're isolated from each other we can only <laughs> we can only s s remain a certain distance from each other they're even policing that in certain states and the thing is that at this time at this time you know one feels oh I, I, I can't I can't even hug my grandchildren <laughs> you can't hug your family we're apart I've 
always felt isolation in a sense is not all that bad to be able to sit in your own space and meditate and look at the world and feel to yourself what is my obligation what are my responsibilities to the world in order to do that you have to set yourself a little bit apart that actually is what is happening at the moment when we're forced into a certain isolation but if, by the way many of you would have noticed even in shul that i always sort of set apart and the reason for that is because as i'm praying to hashem and focusing my neshama my soul towards hashem i'm looking at, at, at the community and i'm thinking well hashem can you give me strength that i can contribute to, to the community, to be able to play my part in the community. Now, there's a beautiful thought in this week's Torah reading, which I really would like to share with you. This week's Torah reading actually tells us of the, the offerings that were brought in the Mishkan, and we're told as follows. Adam ki yakriv mikem korban lashem. A person, a human being, when he brings from you korban lashem, an offering to God. Now, the interesting thing is here, the verse starts with Adam, which of course is singular. It says, Matchil Belashon Yachid. It begins in the singular. Umasayim Belashon Rabim. And ends in the plural. This verse begins when a person brings an offering. In other words, a person, separate, singular, brings an offering. And the verse ends, Takrivu et Korbanachem. You, plural will bring your offering and the comments the commentaries the Mephorshim on that tell us that each person singularly should actually look at the community and think to themselves you know they're separate from the community Adam but they should look at the community and think what can I do in my isolation as a single human being to actually contribute and strengthen my community. Now at the moment, as I said, we're all isolated, forced isolation. We're all in our own spaces, so to speak, on Shabbat, during the week, even in our yard sites when we want to go to shul and be able to say Kaddish together. But this can be used for a positive, for positivity as well. When we're sitting, and it should be, as Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs uh, mentioned in a drasha last week, we should all be praying at the same time as we usually do, together, together. And even those people at home who really don't have a knowledge of being able to, to daven, just to sit there, in our own space and think of the community and ponder on what we can do for the community and how we can strengthen the community because when this crisis is over and Be'ezrat Hashem it will be please God soon please God then those thoughts that you, we will have in our isolation, contemplating and focusing on our community, will please, will please God stir us up into making a better community of this, to make our contribution, our korban, to the klal, 
to the cock community as such. Now, I, I want to add an interesting thought here as well. It's interesting that there are 600,000 otiot letters in the Torah, which actually corresponded to the amount of people they say went out of Mitzrayim of Egypt. So each Jew had a letter apportioned to them. And in order for a Torah to be valid, there had to be a space in between each letter. If there wasn't, the Torah would be invalid. So even there it showed there had to be a separation between each, each one representing the Jewish people, each of the Jewish people. Yet, if one letter was missing, one letter was missing, the Torah is also totally basal, invalid. Let us, at this time, when we are separated, a forced separation virtually in our homes, let us ensure that our Torah, that our heritage is not invalid, and that even at this time, each one of us will, whether you have the knowledge or not, it doesn't matter, focus their minds, their hearts and their souls to our people, to what can be done for our people and for humanity. And then when this, please God, will be over soon, this world will be a far better place as a result. Amen.